October and I'm out this second weekend on private land uh, that my buddy Steve and Brian have allowed me to hunt with them for over 30 years. Uh, Steve has done an excellent job of managing this property. We always see a ton of doe and a ton of buck. It's a mixture of ag and uh, woods and there's just tons of bedding and tons of food. I'm actually going out this morning not to hunt for doe like I was on public land last weekend, but to hunt for uh, one buck, a uh, real tall, wide eight point. Uh, there's quite a few other two and a half year olds that I have seen on camera. I haven't seen any other decent shooters yet, but I'm sure there's a couple out there. We've been trying to do a program the last uh, 10 years of two and a half year old uh, or older. Um, it's difficult to manage, but with the property owners around us, uh, some of them buying in, it's definitely begun to help to see bigger deer on the property. As a matter of fact, three of the last four deer I've shot on the property have been three and a half year old deer. So it's tough to pass those buck up, but it makes a difference if you can be patient and let it go. We're done with the morning hunt this morning. Uh, beautiful morning out there. I saw that spike uh, working on that mock scrape that I had in front of me. And, uh, at three doe that I saw this morning. Well guys, it's middle of October and the first cold front's finally come through. I've got all my stuff packed up and I'm excited to get out in the woods. I'm gonna spend probably most of the day in the woods tomorrow. I got a place on private land to sit in the morning. different spikes. Oh, so six different spikes? Yeah. Wow. Six spikes, a four point, and a small eight point, and then five doe. And then there was doe in the field when I came out, in the back of the field. They were moving everywhere. And as I climbed down out of my tree, I got out and took two steps, and there's two doe like 50 yards away from me. I'm like, busted. Uh. I saw six doe and six buck. One, I sent you a picture of the one small eight, and uh, I th think I sent an email of one of the pictures of five young buck all came through together, and together in a single file. <laughs> there was a tiny spike, there was a long high spike, there was a long high three point, and there were two four points, one was a little bigger and one was a little smaller. They all came through together. I've never seen anything like it. That's funny. And they, and then they came through and then they just did everything around me. They beat up bushes. It was, you know, we got that little hanging grape thing there. That grape, they, oh, they had fun with that. They were you know, beating that around and one would come and do it, another one would do it. And they made scrapes. They peed down their legs, uh, and they were posturing. One of them, the tall spike, had the biggest body, and he was all 
like this most of the time, you know, and driving other people yeah. around. And, but they just were going around in circles. They'd go behind me, they'd go under the apple tree, they'd go up there and they'd go around. And they just like, I, I said in the email, I said, I look like a bunch of eighth grade boys. <laughs> <laughs> I had one spike come in and was drinking out of that 110 gallon uh, tank that I put in the ground. And as he's drinking, another spike comes out from underneath me and comes around. And I had had my video camera one way and I couldn't get it turned because the spike drinking was looking at me. And the other spike came in, ears pinned back, all sideways, walking sideways, posturing. Yeah. And right in that area where there's that strip in between all the vegetation that I cut down, they went head to head. They were yeah. button heads and yeah. They were going at it for like three minutes, and then they walked up the hill towards the road right there, and the one beat the crap out of a bush, and then went ahead and hit my mock scrape and peed on his tarsals and took off. So that was pretty cool. Well, that was a hell of a morning. I uh, saw five doe and eight buck. One small eight point, one four point, and six spikes, <laughs> including two spikes. Uh, duking it out with each other back and forth. So that was a pretty cool morning to see. Uh, no big buck. I think it's still a little bit early here. Um, weather still hasn't dropped below 42, but it was nice to see some deer moving this morning. And uh, I'm sure over the next couple of weeks, it'll improve a ton more. And uh, just got to show you guys sticks in the woods. Yeah, they, uh, they hurt. Kind of looks like my girlfriend smacked me up, huh? Well, after an awesome morning, seeing Buck moving all over the place, even though they weren't big ones, still a fun morning to be in the woods. I'm heading back to private again tonight to uh, sit on the edge of the field with the northwest wind. A place where I've got a mock grapevine scrape in one of the corners of the field and uh, just gonna sit down and kind of relax and watch the woods. I think it's a bit early to see some of the big buck in this property coming out, but gotta be out in the woods to have an opportunity. And with the rain just ending, it's an absolutely beautiful night to be out here. after work got up here to the farm on the private property sitting in the back of a beautiful field with a steep face where deer bed right over the edge it's one of my favorite places to sit no matter whether you see deer or not it's just absolutely beautiful so I got about hour and a half hour and 40 minutes until sunset I'm gonna sit here and relax and I have a feeling a little bit warmer day uh, deer won't come out probably for another half hour, 45 minutes. So I think I've got some time for the woods to settle. So we'll see what happens.
Hello folks, it's a beautiful morning. It's the first morning that it's really cold out. It's about 37, 38 degrees, clear skies, high pressure today. And uh, after last night having a big buck come in after I started cleaning up, I was already packing up, camera was off the stand, was packing the camera away, he turned around, bow hanging beside me and I turned around to the left and there's this big three and a half or four and a half year old buck that comes out right underneath my tree stand. I had to turn around, get my bow off of the bow holder. Um, my release was hanging down. I had to pull that up. I got my release on, pulled back. He heard me. I uh, went ahead and got my pin sighted in and shot and uh, it's in a pine tree and there was branches in the pine tree below me and it ricocheted off and went right over his back part of hunting it's frustrating I do all this work to get out there and have those opportunities but I was fortunate enough to have that opportunity so I'm back out here again this morning and we'll get back at it an exciting morning. Saw six different buck and two or three groups of doe and uh, a couple of the small buck were chasing doe all around this morning and I had created a jumble last winter where I knocked down 
whole bunch of trees in about a quarter acre and now it's really thick right now and the buck like to bed in that and on the other side of that and uh, those two little buck chasing that doe and heat around chased it right around <laughs> that jumble and I knew what was going to happen big eight point jumped up out of there and started chasing the doe and spooked off the little buck and he uh, tended her uh, sprinted past me at about 30 yards and go figure he wouldn't stop for me so I could shoot right and uh, went about 50 yards away at the edge of some corn and bedded down with her for about two hours I got some bait I just need mama to come back to find the little one here and drag the big buck right to me buck's got mama tied down on the other side of the woods over there in the cornfield hopefully this little one starts bleeding just got up and took off and they left so I saw one more small buck come in after that so I'm going to sit maybe another 30 minutes and then uh, head back to the truck and uh, shed some wet clothes from the rain this morning, eat some lunch and find a place to sit for the afternoon. Got done with my morning hunt, decided I was going to shoot my crossbow for a little while, make sure that it was sighted in, all good there. Laid some stuff out that was wet this morning to dry for an hour while I was doing that. I had some lunch. Uh, just set up a blind. Uh, if we get some west winds next week and some rain. And uh, now I'm going to change my clothes and I'm going to get out into a field probably about two, two and a half hours earlier than what I normally would. But I'm ready to relax and sit. And it's that time where buck are moving. I just had a spike run past me um, as I was coming out from setting up the blind. So you never know. This time of year, getting in uh, a tree stand along the field early um, may be a benefit. So we're going to find out.
to do an interview when I got into the tree. But as I sat down, put my release on, and went to shoot my first bearing with my rangefinder, I had a small basket eight point walk out from underneath me about 15 yards away. I got out of work. It's daylight savings time now, so by the time I get into a stand and get set up, I really only have about an hour and a half uh, before it's dark. But I always call that the witching hour, last hour of the night, especially right now. You know, some buck are locked down with does and some are searching, uh, so you never know what you're gonna see at this time. So here it is, I got about I don't know, hour and a half left to sit here and enjoy the evening. It's a beautiful night, but it's way hot. So I'm kind of on a steep edge where I assume that they're not gonna come up over the edge until like the last 15 to 20 minutes and hoping to get a buck. See ya. Did you ever have one of those archery seasons where you just don't feel like anything went right during the year from missing a buck by hitting a branch right at dark to having your crossbow strings explode to having deer just out of range i passed up the second week a nice two and a half year old eight point ten yards in front of me ten minutes eating apples broadside thought maybe i'd see a bigger buck during the year it's part of the process of hunting so, and uh, even coming back to your truck after hunting for an evening and have two deer feeding 10 feet from your truck this is kind of what I felt like this archery season just kind of lost and blind oh well it happens every once in a while first season of trying to really hunt public land mix it up with the private and uh, I started to figure out public land after about three weeks but more than anything, it gave me an idea of what I have to do this next off season to set up scouting around food sources and bedding areas for doe. So that first three weeks, I put myself in a situation that I have a better opportunity to shoot a doe. Either way, I still love being out in the woods. I still love hunting. Got all the gun season to come. Um, some good times with my friends, Brian and Steve here on the farm. Um, my buddy Lee and I still have a PA trip planned. May even get to hunt with Blake a little bit more, like Ohio. Oh, there's a, a buck out in the field right there, just crossing. And uh, definitely have the weekend with my cousins in PA for the opening weekend of PA. So we got time. We'll see what happens.